morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are. I'm uh, Dr. John Martini. For those of you who may not have heard me before, I have a special message for you today that I think might be uh, worth taking some notes for. So if you have something to write with and write on, that would be probably wise to do. Um, many, many years ago, I did an experiment about the pursuit of a one-sided fantasy of being happy all the time, being positive all the time, being up all the time. And I attempted to do that with all kinds of strategies, only to discover that I had like a built-in thermostat to keep me centered. And I finally realized my pursuit of one-sidedness, monopoles, didn't exist. You know, even in physics, the search for a monopole has not existed, except at the deepest quantum level. They suspect there may be a monopole at the quantum level. But the reality is that in our life, there's two sides. There's up and down and happy and sad and kind and cruel and pairs of opposites. So I gave up happiness because it made me too sad. That was the theme that I learned when I was about 30, actually around 28 to 30. And I realized that the pursuit of one-sidedness was the very source of my aggravations and frustrations. I was setting up unrealistic expectations. Now, let's put this into context. <clears throat> if I went up to an individual and I asked them um, if they could be always nice, never mean, always kind, never cruel, always positive, never negative, always giving, never taking, always one-sidedness, one-sided, their own intuitive psychostat, their BS meter would go off and go, um, I don't know about that. And if I said you can only be the other side, only negative without positive, they would immediately go the same thing. But when you go up to somebody and said, there's sometimes you're going to be nice, sometimes you're gonna be mean, sometimes you're gonna be kind, sometimes you're gonna be cruel, sometimes you're gonna be up, sometimes down, some happy, some sad. People intuitively know that there's a truth in that. There's a, there's a balancing act. And it's been shown that our neurochemistry has a feedback system to homeostate balance. Our electronics in our brain are now known to do that. Our physiology is known to do that. In fact, I've shown in the breakthrough experience to thousands of people that every single time that they think they're up, they're hiding their downness. When they're down, they're hiding their upness. They're actually simultaneous aspects of our own psyche. So, I'm not gonna promote as many so-called gurus and self-help people like to promote how to be one-sided. It's an opium of the masses, but it doesn't exist. The four major places where that is promoted is in what I call the four H's, the four opiums of the masses. That's healthcare that assumes you're gonna have health without disease, which is an illusion. Happiness without sadness to psychologists, psychiatrists, an illusion. Harmony without disharmony, an illusion, and heaven without hell. So the medical or the, the uh, health professionals, the psychology professionals, the political, social, economic professionals, and the theological professionals, all of them promote the fantasy of one-sidedness. And this actually sets people up for unrealistic expectations. I found out that people are depressed when they are comparing their current reality to a fantasy about how life's supposed to be. And there are 15 most common fantasies. I'd like to go over those real quick. One of the fantasies is you're expecting another individual to be one-sided. You're expecting to be up, never down, positive, never negative, kind, never cruel, peaceful, never wrathful, et cetera. Whenever you have an expectation on any human being to be one-sided, you're setting yourself up for a false expectation that can't be lived by because when you support their values, they can be nice. If you challenge their values, they can be mean. And life has a balance of support and challenge in our life and ups and downs. So to expect a human being to be one-sided is setting yourself up for um, anger and aggression towards them, blaming and feeling betrayed by them, criticizing them and challenging them, despaired and depressed by that, um, desire to exit and escape them, frustration, futility, grouchiness and grief, hatred and hurt, irritability and insanity, these A, B, C, D, F, G, H's, I's of negativity are a compensation for an unrealistic expectation. And so therefore I gave up happiness, one-sidedness 
it made me too sad. The very source of our depression is the comparison of our current reality to a fantasy that doesn't exist, not going to exist, can't exist. No human being can be one-sided. You're designed to have both sides. You have an autonomic nervous system designed for support and challenge for things going that, in a way that you think are pleasurable and painful. You have a built-in, in a sense, uh, palliative process and nociceptive process, or you might say uh, um, the things, the idea that uh, you know you can actually think you get pleasure and pain. The pleasure and pain principle, the support and challenge principle, the prey and predator principle of our amygdala. And um, so that's one. The second one is the expectation on that same individual to live in your values, not their own. And this happens. And whenever you do, if you expect them to live in your values and support you more than challenge you, you're setting yourself up for the ABCDs of negativity again, because they're not going to. They're making decisions according to their own values, not yours. And every week in the breakthrough experience, I'm having to crack people's fantasies and help them get grounded so they can set realistic expectations so they can have fulfillment in life. You're not going to have fulfillment with half fulfillment. Half fulfillment is one sidedness, full fulfillment is full, both sides. And you don't need to get rid of any one half of an individual to love them. And you don't need to get rid of half of yourself to love you. That's the farce that's out there. It's a multi trillion dollar lie. And I, I, I love being the one that's finally speaking up about it because nobody's doing it. They're all just promoting the fantasy, sucking people in to get the fix and then having letdowns. And then people blame themselves because they're not getting it because they think something's wrong with them when in fact their physiology is doing its job. It's designed to have both. We maximally grow at the border of support and challenge, kind and cruel, nice and mean. We need both. Both are necessary for evolution. We need them to keep us centered. The next unrealistic expectation is the combination of the two. An expectation, one, they're supposed to be up, not down, always one-sided, and supportive, not challenging, and live in your values and not go against your values. Not going to happen. If you're in a marriage, you know that that's not going to happen. Anytime you've dated anybody for any period of time, you figure that out. So it's a delusion. Then the next delusion is an unrealistic expectation on yourself to be one-sided, to be up, never down, high, never low, positive, never negative, kind, never cruel, peaceful, never wrathful. And the entire moral construct that we've been falsely promulgated in our society from religions, society, grandparents, parents, people who don't think for themselves and don't actually have a reality base, just an opium fantasy, is the hypocrisy of one-sidedness. There's no human being one-sided. There's no human being that's a saint without a sinner or kind without a cruel. Look honestly at yourself and quit living in a fantasy and get grounded about reality. And you'll set realistic expectations, which are objectives, which give you results in life. To that you can expect and that you can obtain. 33 years old, no, 30 years old, I, I gave that up. I finally realized it was a waste of time trying to go to one-sided experiences. All the self-help books I'd read prior to that misled me. So I know this is not going to feel great to hear, but I'm not, that's not what it's about. I'm not here to make you feel good. I'm here to make you face the truth so you can actually set real goals in real time with real people and get real results. The next one is an expectation on you to live outside your values and live in somebody else's values. I see this every day. I see people fantasizing they're going to be financially independent. They don't have the values that will ever lead them to that. They don't have the values that will actually buy assets and accumulate with patience. They have immediate gratification. I just went through a list of 37 major celebrities that were extremely wealthy and walk on bus now. Because what they were doing is living beyond their means. They made a pile of money and they spent more than they made. Major fortunes, people you know about, because they had a fantasy that somehow they're supposed to have one-sidedness and they're supposed to be able to spend without having to be accountable and actually invest. So an unrealistic expectation on yourself to be living outside your own values, another thing that's going to set you up for this sadness because the fantasy of one-sidedness is the source of your nightmare. The philia is the source of your phobia. The, the saintly image of a moral construct of one-sidedness is the source of your sinner. I, you don't get it, that those come as a pair. There's no one without the other. If you study hagiography and the study of the saints, you'll see that 20% of them didn't exist. They're made up by fabricated religious organizations. They were used in order to manipulate people to convert people as a marketing gimmick. And half of them didn't even exist. And half of them didn't live the life that they looked like. 
So I, I did a very thorough study of that. I found some very fascinating cover-ups there. So don't be fooled by one-sidedness. You're not going to be that way. You're not going to find people that way. Goals aren't that way. Life is not that way. That's why I gave up happiness. It made me too sad. I finally realized that I wanted life to give me both. Then there's another unrealistic expectation, the combination of those two, that you're supposed to be one-sided and live outside your values. Then the combination of yours, you doing that and the people around you doing that, that's number seven. Number eight is unrealistic expectation on the world in general. The people all around you are supposed to live one-sided and you're wanting a peaceful world without conflict. You're wanting a support without challenge. Man, that leads to the victim mentality, the multi-billion dollar lie that's a victim of history model, the perpetrator innocent victim model. All that is a byproduct of those fantasies. And no psychologist is telling you that. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. And they call them shrinks for a reason. They'll shrink your mind getting stuck in that belief. I, I confront that every weekend in the break to experience because it's, it's just bullshit. Excuse the expression, but it's just not true. There is no such thing as a one-sided individual. There's no such thing as somebody that's going to live by the little Pontiana fantasy about how people are supposed to be. They live according to their values. That's the only thing you can ever trust another individual to do is to make decisions according to what they value most at that moment based on the data that they're perceiving. And if you have realistic expectations on them to do that, you won't be betrayed. But you'll betray yourself by having false expectations of one-sidedness. And you'll betray your own self on yourself, expecting yourself to be one-sided and living by some injected moral construct that's a tradition around you that's not even true for you. And that's what I see for people conforming to, idealisms that aren't real. And then they beat themselves up and wonder why life's not fulfilling. And then there's an unrealistic expectation on the whole world, all society to live in your values. I saw that when I spoke to the UNESCO at the United Nations Delegate Training Program. And I watched those young people having fantasies about their ideals and their values, what would save the world. How ignorant that is. No, I'm not gonna promote that kind of stuff. People need to wake up to what's real. And it's, and it's almost amazing how gullible we are to those things. And then there's an unrealistic expectation of the combination of those. Now you're expecting the world to live one-sided and to support your values and be kind all the time to you. That's not the way it's gonna be. You do things across the world, there's a complete spectrum of values. And whatever you value, there's somebody with an opposite set of values. The world has support and challenge. And there's going to be cooperation and competition and peace and war going on in the world. And there's remodeling. And that's exactly what's needed in the body. And it's exactly what's needed in society to remodel and to adapt to a changing astronomical environment we live in. We literally are moving around a galaxy in a solar system. And it's going in and out of thickets and thins of, of debris. And we're having challenges and changes in our entire ecosystem. And we need to adapt. And that requires building and destroying. Just like our body has to have building and destroying anabolism, catabolism, to make up metabolism, to make it adapt to changing worlds, so does our society. Our society has pairs of opposites. And find, if you look in your own family, you'll find your own brother or sister quite opposite to you. And when you get married, you'll find out that you delegate things to your spouse that they'll do that's not inspiring to you. You'll find pairs of opposites and values. You'll find a complete spectrum of values. And none of them are right or wrong. They're just parts of everybody's value system. And we artificially put and impose on there our values, thinking the world's supposed to fit in our values, but it's not even designed that way. It wouldn't work that way. It'd be stagnation and no innovation and no creativity if there was just one-sidedness. You would, you would actually be nothing. If anybody supported you all the time and they were kind to you all the time and they didn't have, you, didn't have any innovations and challenges and, and have to put you through some real challenge in life, you don't grow, you don't innovate, you stagnate. Nice. The, the beauty, beauty of having a food chain between prey and predator is prey is anabolic and supportive and predator is catabolic and challenging. And you need both of them for maximum fitness. If you had prey without predator, you get fat and sluggish, and not fit. If you get predator without prey, you get emaciated starvation and you wouldn't be fit. But you put the two together, you get fitness and you need both. So I, I gave up happiness because it made me too sad because you need both. Your brain is set up that way. Then there's unrealistic expectations on mechanical objects to be one-sided and supposed to do everything that you imagine. And the machines are not always made for what you fantasize about. And then there's a, a, expecting machines to live in your values and read your mind. Even though they do a pretty good job in, with Microsoft Word and the cloud today, they still aren't going to read your mind and give, give you everything that you fantasize about. 
So the reality is that nature, if you put all those together, you get the 15th one and the 14th one. And these 15 delusions are the source of depression. And depression is a comparison of your current reality to some of those fantasies. And those fantasies are all the upsides, all the one-sided worlds of support and positive. And that's why I don't promote it. It, it sucks people dry from their own inspirations in life. When you actually are willing to embrace both sides of life and not have to get rid of half of the people that you're around and yourself, you finally love and appreciate yourself. Every human being wants to be loved and appreciated for who they are. And who they are is both sides, kind and cruel, nice and mean, up and down, positive and negative, support and challenge, honest and dishonest. Every human being has every trait I found, 4,628 traits I found in human beings. So living in a fantasy that they're supposed to fit into a box, a moral construct and tradition that's idealism that has no basis in reality, except some arbitrary individual that proposed it because they were wounded by the opposite in the past. And so they proposed it to protect them from their previous wounds so they don't have to go through their challenge again and grow up. Those things I'm not interested in. They don't allow you to be accountable for both sides. I have no desire to get rid of half of myself. I wanna be loved for both sides, so do you. So I'm not here promoting a one-sided thing of happiness without sadness or one side without the other because I've never met anybody that lived it. I've never met one individual that can honestly look me in the eye and say that I'm only one-sided. And you can't either. And I've, I've taught people in the breakthrough experience, thousands and thousands of people, and I haven't found one, somebody that could put their hand up and say I'm one-sided and prove it to themselves and convince a room of that. So I'm not going to promote it. I know it's sold in the marketplace. I know it sells. It gets an opium thing. You buy it. You pay money for it. But it's a fantasy. And I'm not going to promote a fantasy because it's not going to help you master your life. I'm interested in you mastering your life. And mastering your life is embracing both sides of yourself. And so I'm not here to get rid of half of you. You don't want to get rid of half of you. And it's futile. If you look very carefully and look at everything you thought you got rid of in your life, you still got it. You thought you're going to get rid of anger. You still got it. Thought you're going to get rid of meanness. You still got it. Thought you're going to rid of lies. You still got it. You do all those things. And if you are really under a blind spell and you really can't see the truth about yourself and you're still trying to avoid yourself with the pride, then your little amygdala is running your life instead of your executive center. And it skews the view of yourself and distorts it. And you get a dysmorphic view about who you are. And then you go around self-righteously pointing your finger at other people and having three pointing back at yourself. And everybody else can see it except you. And you're not transparent to yourself. So I'm not going to promote a one-sided world. I find it futile instead of utile. And I want you to be able to embrace both sides of you and the people around you because a real objective, not a fantasy, has both sides. You know, you go to Mars, imagine going off to Mars with a space thing with, with uh, Elon Musk or, or whatever. They are not going to sit there and think of only the upsides and only the hop, happy, positive, fat to see sides. They're going to think of everything that go wrong. There's been about a dozen or more explosions on the way to Mars. I don't know if you've seen them, but there's explosions happening all the time. And these are spacecraft that don't make it. For every one that does, there's a, or every 10 that does, there's a few that don't. And so you have to plan, you have to go through and prepare, you have to think of everything that's the downside, you have to prepare with all, all the so-called negative, meditation on all the evils, and you have to think out and mitigate the risk and think of what this happens, what do we do? That's an astronaut going to Mars. You have to think things out. And that's called foresight. And the executive center in your brain is designed for foresight to make you stop, reflect, think of both sides, prepare for both sides, so you have a real objective, so you can get real results, real actions, and not live in la-la land. Our fantasies create anxieties and paranoia, and our realities set up objectives that get things done. Our executive center is designed to transform fantasies into objectives, and a real goal is an objective. And so they are both sided. So if you've never taken the time to go through it, I went through the Oxford Dictionary many, many, many years ago, and I looked through every possible human behavioral trait that I could find. And I saw archetypes, and I saw these little idealisms and these little quadrant models and all this stuff that's crap about how we're supposed to fit in the love languages and stuff. Man, that's so farced. That's assuming that every human being is not unique and that there's only five types of people or only four types of people. That is crap. No, it's not true. You're unique, you have a unique set of values, unique experiences, unique vantage points. The hierarchy of your values are totally unique, like a fingerprint, and you perceive life different than everybody that you'll ever meet. And you, have, you desire to be loved and appreciated for that, and that's gonna be a variable 
It's not going to be like everybody else. It's not going to fit into some box and tradition and convention and little so-called uh, rules that everybody's going to do it. You're going to have your own pathway. And if you want to be an on bar visionary, you can't sit there and subordinate to outside systems. You have to learn the art of communicating what's inspiring to you in a way that is fulfilling to other people, at least enough to keep you moving. In the process of doing it, you realize that you have both sides. And if you strive for a one-sided world inside you, you'll end up getting beat up by the other side. The more you're addicted to protection, the more you get aggression. The more you get to look for nice, the more you get a mean person. The more you try to deny something in yourself, you attract it because you disempower yourself being addicted to that which supports your values. And when you do, you become juvenile independent. You attract the bully in there to make sure you grow up. The very thing you're trying to run away from, you keep running into. The very thing you condemn, you breed until you finally realize that you're all that. And I went through that do Oxford Dictionary and I found out I had all 4,628 traits I found in that dictionary in my life. There was nothing missing. I always say at the level of the soul, nothing's missing you. At the level of your senses, things appear to be missing in you. So I'm not here to teach you one-sidedness. I hope you've gotten enough maturity and grown enough in your own experience to see the obvious and not be taken by gimmicks of one-sidedness, how to be happy. I, I worked with a woman that basically was writing a book on how to be happy, and I found out that she was sad and going through depression as she was trying to publish the book. A classical example of the, the hidden obvious, the elusive obvious, I call it. The reality is that people who are striving for that one-sidedness are the saddest people I've met. I have people in my seminar on the breakthrough experience. They come in, I just want to be happy. I just want to be happy. I just want to be happy. And they're sad because they're basically keeping looking for fantasies. No, I'm not promoting that. I'm the wrong guy if you want those. You need to go get the rah-rah sessions for that. I'm a guy who's there to educate and inform you about human behavior as it really is, not as the fantasies people impose. The magnificence of who you are and the magnificence of the way life is is far greater than any fantasies you compare it to. I think it was Leibniz who said that we sometimes think we can improve upon the magnificence of the way it is with our fantasies about how it should be instead of honoring the way it is. When we do, our human will matches what has been called divine will, has been called the way the life is. And I'm a firm believer that actually facing the groundedness of life and appreciating it as it is liberates you because now what you're striving for and what's there match. And that's when you have fulfillment in life. Fulfillment comes when there's a congruency between what you expect and what you get. And to expect a one-sided world and a world that's never going to give it to you is going to set you up for the ABCDs of negativity. So I just wanted to take the time to share that. Your amygdala is always trying to avoid pain and seek pleasure, avoid predator, seek prey. When you're not living by your highest values, you're not inspired by what you do, you're not doing something meaningful, you're not contributing fairly to another individual, and you're down in the unfulfillment zone of the amygdala down below, you're going to be looking for a pleasure without a pain, a happy without a sad. And guess what? There'll be somebody out there to sell you that. And if you're gullible enough to buy it, well, you haven't learned your lesson. But in the process of doing that, if you get back to your executive center by living by priority and filling your day with really, truly meaningful, high priority things that serve people, that make a difference, that is equitably fair exchange, so you actually have a rewards in life, enough to delegate lower priority things and get to objectives and know that you're here to go and solve problems, not avoid problems, search for challenges, not avoid them. Because when you search for challenges that inspire you, you, get in, you wake up your genius. If you try to avoid challenges that you don't, that don't inspire you, you wake up your frustrations because you're going to have distress and illness as a result of that to try to wake you up. And all those signs and symptoms and chaos you have in your life in every area of your life is a feedback to try to get you objective and get you balanced and get you to set realistic expectations. I'm a firm believer you can empower all areas of your life. That's not a fantasy. That's doable. And with that will come pains and pleasures, support and challenge, eases and difficulties. There'll be things that will be a supportive and challenging every moment of the way. When you get grounded in that and understand that's how it is, you can do amazing things. But don't think you're going to get a one-sided world. And trying to escape that way and dissociate from reality is not the way to empower yourself and do something amazing on the planet. So I just want to take the time to do it. I probably shocked you, probably shook some of you up, probably didn't understand some of it. But I, uh, I'm absolutely certain that what I'm sharing is solid and, it's, and it will make a difference in your life if you get that. I gave up happiness. It made me too sad because I found out that it's a waste of time searching for a one-sided magnet. The Buddha says the desire for that which is unobtainable and the desire to avoid that which is unavoidable is the source of human suffering, and it's spot on. You're going to go through your passionate suffering constantly looking for one-sided world. 
And by the way, that's another thing that people are trying to sell you out there. Find your passion. Passion means to suffer. Compassion means to suffer with somebody. If you want to go follow that path instead of an inspired mission, you want to follow a passion, go ahead. Go look up the etymologies. Go study it. Go, don't just be fooled by the vernacular that's out there today in the common language. Go and find some real insights about how your mind works, and you will discover your mind is a homeostat designed to do something that's an objective. When we live by our highest values and we're objective in our pursuits and we live by our, our really most meaningful and inspiring thing, we embrace both pain and pleasure, happy and sad in the pursuit of a great cause and a purpose that we make in life. So I'm interested in a purposeful life, a missionful life, not a passionate, immediate gratifying fantasy life that sets you up for defeat. So I've said my piece, I've made that point. Um, if you have never been to the breakthrough experience and want to know how to break through that, the Demartini method is the best way I know to get past those illusions and be able to take and integrate those and to prove to you that principle. I'm not interested in theory. I'm interested in demonstrating it to you beyond a shadow of a doubt. And if also, if you want to go and take yourself to another level, it's not going to come from fantasies. It's not going to come from hoping and praying. It's going to come from action. It's going to come from strategy. It's going to take strategic planning. It's going to take foresight. It's going to take mitigating risks. And I know that I want to share something with you. There's a gift because I, I know that this will be helpful to you. It's called Awaking Your Astronomical Vision. And I've shared this before, and I'm going to share it with you because some of you may be new on here. This is a live presentation I did in a planetarium to a group of YPO specialists or people that have gone extremely well in their business. And it's, and it's about having an astronomical vision. <clears throat> if we have a small vision, we have a small life. If we have an astronomical vision, we have a bigger life. It's where we want to play in the game. Now, <clears throat> it's a fantasy to fantasize about it without the action steps, without the strategies. So what I'm doing in this, this, this offer is to just give you a gift on something that I hope that you'll listen to more than once. I would put this through your head two, three, maybe even six times. Some of the students that have done that have made the biggest impact from it. But it's about getting grounded. When you live by your highest values, your space and time horizons grow. You give yourself permission to do something greater. You tackle challenges and embrace objectively those challenges. When you actually solve those problems and challenges that you face and you serve other people in the process as well as yourself, you keep expanding and you keep building momentum towards something that's more profound. This principle is solid. And this CD set, I guarantee you, can help you wake up a more realistic pathway that you can achieve more. So I want you to have that because otherwise you're going to play small. Don't expect to do something, get beyond yourself, unless you have a vision beyond yourself. And don't expect to do something globally if you don't have an astronomical vision. It's the people that have astronomical visions that make their mark on the planet. So it's up to you where you want to play in the game life. There's no right and wrong about it. There's no moral issues about where you want to play. But if you have an honest evaluation of yourself, you'll know that you want to expand. I've never met anybody that wants to get up in the morning and shrink in knowledge. Never want to see them shrink in business or shrink in their, their finances. I've seen them wanting to expand. And that's potential and that's doable. But it takes a strategy. It takes foresight. And this as awakening your astronomical vision can help you in the direction of waking that up. So please take, take advantage of it. Just go to demartini.inc uh, slash balanced or, or yeah, slash balanced to claim it. And I know that it will be something you'll listen to more than once and it makes a difference. I was inspired when I was there sharing it and I know you'll be inspired listening to it. So remember, you're two-sided. You don't need to get, half of, get rid of half of yourself to love yourself. And no matter what you've done or not done, you're still worthy of love, both sides. So I gave up happiness. It made me too sad but I gave up fulfillment because it made me inspired to do something more with my life. I love you. Thank you for listening. Please take that, listen to it again if necessary, get the gift. I'll see you in the next round. I look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you. Thank you for joining me for this presentation today. If you found value out of the presentation, please go below and please share your comments. We certainly appreciate that feedback. And be sure to subscribe and hit the notification icons. That way I can bring more content to you and share more to help you maximize your life. I look forward to our next presentation. Thank you so much for joining me.